I was a punk, man. I used to fuck with everybody. I used to shit at school. I used to, when I was bored at school, I used to draw people and then have little arrows pointing at different things wrong with their gear and shit like that. <laughs> and then I'd show everybody at EMB and shit. <laughs> Don't, you gotta edit that out, man. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the Epically Later Show. This episode is about Henry Sanchez. Henry is famous for skating EMB. It was this spot in San Francisco at the end of Market Street. It just was like the central point of skateboarding. Almost every skater in the crew was like sponsored or became pro. And Henry was definitely one of the most influential skaters of that group, along with Mike Carroll and some other people. Henry really brought in a new set of tricks to skateboarding. Like sometimes people get really technical and skate slow, but not Henry. And um, I asked him a lot of nerdy questions. This is me uh, getting nerdy on Henry Sanchez at EMV. Did you think it was, it seemed like the ground's really rough, like, yeah, like the bricks. Yeah, I don't understand how we did that, man, because back then the wheels were even smaller. And uh, it wasn't a problem back then. I guess when you get better, you start getting pickier. And it seems tripping on little cracks here and there, but I mean, look at this place, it's a mess. Like each one of these little pot little holes is an axle. I always wanted to do something different, but not really like try to draw too much attention to myself, you know, just, just do me. I was intimidated because, you know, everybody was rude to all the newcomers. And, you know, I, people were ignoring me for a little while and then I just, you know, just started skating and, then, you know, if you're good, they're going to be cool with you, I guess. You definitely had to be able to uh, put up with people talking shit to you and, you know what I mean? You couldn't be fake. Like, fake-ass dudes just weren't allowed to hang out. I mean, it didn't matter who you were. You could be pro, you could be just some 300-pound black dude. You know, if you were straight up, it was cool, you could hang out. If you weren't, it wasn't going to happen. Uh, being a pro didn't mean shit down here. <laughs> you know, you get smacked up just like everyone else if you act stupid. And, uh, having your own board, not... It's just about... Full T. Huh? Full T. There was, there's, there's like, you know, like, dude, you hear about Jamie Thomas, it was like, supposedly like a dude who can't have had a hard time. We, we had it out for Jamie Thomas. He wasn't pro back then, so I have no idea why. <laughs> it was just like a local thing or something. Maybe because he uh, came to California and we thought that he was just like, just trying to juice, juice it too much or something, I don't know. It's really stupid, I actually emailed him and apologized for whatever I may have done to him. <laughs> That's just how it was, we are assholes. <laughs> I think people have like this whole idea that anybody who went there that wasn't from there was like getting their board stolen. But they would also do that to each other a lot of times too, you know? Yeah, yeah, I throw my board breaking all the time. Throw it at kids, I, there'd be posses of kids sitting there watching me skate and I think they were laughing at me. You know, they probably weren't, I would just, not kids either, I always say the word kid, people get it wrong. People the same age as me, I'd throw my board right at their whole crew. Smash right into them without them looking because I thought they were laughing at me. But yeah, yeah, no doubt. I probably broke a board every day. It all started with skating. I was a I was a kind young man. I never really like stressed out on anything before skating. Then I started skating and I just started stressing out. And then it started going into like my personality. Like if someone would say say the wrong thing to me, I'd be like, what? And, he was like the original tantrum kid, like like as far as focusing boards and dipping boards and screaming at your board, throwing your board. He was like the original dude to start that. He was a little stress case. He would just skate around and be better than everyone basically. He was really good, even then. But he would stress real bad and fling his board around and freak out. We called him him punt. He was a little asshole, but I loved him. There'd be, a, there'd be like literally 400 kids skating in the park and uh, Henry and Mike and sometimes Javante would come through and everyone would sit down just because they would just want to watch. I mean, even people who could skate and like who are down here every day like me, you just want to, you'd want to sit down and just watch what they're doing. It's ridiculous, like the switch stand stuff and the nose grind stuff. He would just be like, hey, like this is try to film this. He wouldn't be like, hey, I want to do this. This is the trick. It was just like, hey, you know, grab the camera, let's get this, you know. But it was just that thing where like every day he would do something that you'd never seen. Or one thing that I really remember that he did first and I was really like tripping out pretty hard and I was like, wow, that was super gnarly, was he did a fakey 5 out, a fakey flip out. And you just see him like getting close to it right away, like whoa. And he probably didn't take him that many tries, but he had that, um, 
that Terminator board. I remember just seeing it like, you know, you can just see the graphic. He just did it, it's like completely perfect. We skated a lot together when we um, first met each other. It's weird because I remember him, there was a point where he was trying all kinds of shit. He was trying and trying, I mean, sometimes he'd do it. I and mean, this is when we were skating together a lot. And then it's the same summer that I went down to San Diego. And I came back and it was just like, holy shit, dude, this dude got fucking sick. The best way to describe Henry skating is he's kind of like a bowling ball. He was just plowing through ledges like there was no tomorrow. And I think Henry's part of the main reason they skate stop all these ledges here because they're so round and gouged out and it's pretty sick. It's like, oh, if it got skate stop, it got skate stop for a reason. It's just, there's no more ledge anyways. He just used it up. You should go to a clip right now if you got one. I think when they do that, it's uglier than any skate mark possible. It's hating, man. That's hating. Skater hating right there. He was like skated just raw. He was like the raw guy, raw street. He always did the newest shit that none of us could do. He came down and you were like, just like, how can you be that good? You know what I mean? And then um, we were all like the guys were just watching going, all right, what's Henry going to do now? And then he would do it and we were like, fuck. How's that? How's that? <laughs> How's that? How did you get on blind? I, I hooked up with Guy Mariano and Day One, and Guy was really cool. And he's like, "Come, come stay with us and blah blah blah. Stay down here." And like, you know, that was Guy Mariano, and he was like my favorite, one of my favorite dudes. So I was like, "Hell yeah!" And then I went skating with Gons one day, and then a uh, guy was like, "Do this trick, do that trick, like tricks that they saw me do before." <laughs> and then I did a couple of tricks, and Mark's like, "You're on." <laughs> it was the best day of my life in skateboarding, man. To be accepted by him. Oh. If Mark was happy with my skating, then that's all that mattered, you know? And, and he was happy with it, so I guess that's all, that's all that mattered. <laughs> I mean, after he did the backside nose blunt, that was his pinnacle moment. Was like, wow, who's this dude? And then everybody wanted it, but the skating was so small that there's no way that people could, you know, he's the guy, I want a zillion of his boards or whatever. There was, there was no marketing behind any of it now. Now, it's like if some guy does some mega trick, that's the guy for that moment. And then until that time, or somebody ups it, guess what, you're off. Uh, those are some dark years for me. I, was, uh, I wasn't too into skateboarding, proving myself at that point. I was just sad in life, I don't know why. In reality, I didn't have any worries. All I had to do was ride my skateboard. <laughs> but I was young though, so oh well. But, yeah, this is the place where I could have proven myself, but I didn't. I proved to be a drunk. <laughs> I would sit on that bench right there and drink all day with geese. It's like the cool thing to say you don't have regrets, but, you know, yeah, of course, man. There's, I could look back at a lot of things that I should have done better, you know. I, I, I should have I took advantage of the skill that I had, you know, and, like, and I didn't realize that until my skill had diminished. And yeah, when I look back at it, I'm like, fuck, why didn't I just skate? I, sh I could have took more advantage of the opportunity that I had. And, uh, I didn't. And, uh, you know, girl skateboards, I should have rode for them too. I had a lot of bills because I was making good money with blind. I couldn't sustain my lifestyle or even keep like my car, my apartment, if I were to ride for girl. You know, I would have had to take my car back or something drastic like that, and I didn't want to do that. But, uh, you know, I probably should have. <laughs> it was a dumb mistake. I should have went with those guys. So what have you been doing lately? A lot of people just totally counted me out, you know, and um, there was a lot of lost time and a lot of making up I had to do. And um, I, I just felt the, the flame, you know, it, from inside, like, get heated up again, and then I, you know, I just, I was on a mission to prove myself once again. You know, I didn't like where I was standing in terms of like my spot in skate history. I thought that you know I deserved more and um, you know more recognition, and so I had to prove myself again. I'm already happy now. I'm in a new career. I'm an auto body tech at a auto body shop. It's good, man. And I'm gonna 
be making my own hot rods and shit like that. So if you're a pro out there, you want a hot rod, hollow. Cause I'll hook it up for cheap, dog. Like a sick one. No <laughs> rust buckets. <laughs> you can fix up Braden's van. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I could definitely hook that shit up. I saw it. It doesn't look like it needs much fixing, but under the carpet, you never know. There's, there could be a lot of rust and shit like that underneath. But uh, all the trim and the interior, exterior, it looks clean on this shit. I was actually stoked to see somebody invest money into an old school vehicle like that. You know, it was tight. I like that. <laughs>